Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the brand new series of WD Gold U2 NVMe SSD. Right, so straight off the bat, gotta let you know I'm getting over an incredible sore throat, so you're gonna hear my voice like this throughout. If that's not your bag, I recommend you choose another video, but let's push on. WD and their color series of drives has been, in the data storage industry, hugely famous. WD were able to produce a range of drives and, with a great clever marketing tool, differentiated colors for each series. WD Red for NAS, WD Blue for Standard, WD Black for Pros, WD Red for NAS, WD Purple for uh, Surveillance, WD Gold for Enterprise and Data Centers. And it's that last one that we want to talk about today. Because the WD Gold series has always existed in hard drive form, although there was a dip where they weren't in production for a little while, but now they're back. <clears throat> this is their first series of SSDs for Enterprise. Taking advantage of NVMe SSD storage and the popular uh, configuration and port U2, which is kind of a SAS hybrid port that's incredibly similar to traditional SAS, but it's used primarily for outputting SSD NAND chips. This new range of SSD uh, gold chips featuring NVMe U2 are definitely something that a lot of business users have been demanding for a long time. That said, WD has had a range of enterprise level SSDs at their user's disposal for a long time. The Ultrastar DCSN series is a range of NVMe U2 SSDs, but WD bought HEST and kind of absorbed a number of their brands and Ultrastar for a while was their premium top tier brand for data centers, even though a lot of people quite like gold, hence why gold, I think, came back because of its simplicity. So, what do we know about this series of drives? I've got my notes there on screen as well. First and foremost, it's available in four different capacities. The lowest capacity being just shy of a terabyte at 960 gigabytes, and the largest one being around 7.6 uh, 7 .6 terabytes. So, rounded its out way up to eight terabyte ssds and again these are going to be in two and a half inch chassis slightly larger obviously as you get to the larger capacities which is fairly standard for u2 ssds kind of resembling a 15 mil drive but still in that laptop uh, form factor there of two and a half inch now what i'm holding here is the wd red ssd that was released at the closing stages of 2019 now this features SATA, as you can see there. This drive again, 60 gigabits per second SATA, so-so, all right to get by on. And then of course, we've seen this rise in the last couple of years of NVMe, PCIe based storage. And this here is an NVMe SSD, but again, that uses the NVMe U2 connector. And what this new series features, and unfortunately I don't have one right here, is that U2 connection, that enterprise SAS and PCIe based connection for those SSDs in the NAND inside, giving you insane flash throughput. Now the SSDs are taking advantage of USB, I'm oh, sorry, not USB, uh, PCIe times uh, USB Gen 3.1 times 4. And again, not PCIe 4 yet, but we're getting there, aren't we? We're getting there. Now, with this, you have got that connection of around or oh, over 3,000 megabytes per second read and well over 2,000 megabytes per second write. And in the right data center RAID environment, you are going to get insane performance there over the RAID. Now, there's, of course, other values about how much you can write to these disks and how often you can refresh them. WD say that this new series are 0 0.8 um, data writes per day. And what that means is up to 80% of the available capacity can be completely, you can erase, rewrite, rewrite, rewrite up to 0 0.8 per day, which is a pretty high number for an SSD. And when you're dealing with drives with that much speed inside them, inside them and particularly for large scale caching purposes, 0 0.8 or 80% is still pretty good in terms of data writes per day. In terms of data written, you have to look in with these drives at petabytes, with the lowest end of the scale at around 1.4 petabytes written, all the way up to the top there, at, uh, according to my notes, 11.2 petabytes written. So again, nice spectrum there, and you would expect the petabyte, 
petabytes written to be larger overall with the larger drives and again that's over a period of time and of course these drives arrive with an enterprise level warranty of five years something that should be standard with not only most ssd but certainly any enterprise product and particularly in terms of media storage now the target demographic for these drives is twofold one there are people out there that are still using u2 ssds which intel largely dominate that market and they're aiming to get their drives inside those machines but also there are people out there that are utilizing um sas and u2 connected wd storage and they want users to move over to the u2 nvmes from the wd gold series and it makes a lot of sense because from their point of view the cost of nand is decreasing technically and i'll get to that in a bit but on top of that while it's decreasing there's also the idea that the price is getting lower and businesses who are looking three five ten years down the line can absorb the additional cost now uh, of ssd over NVM, uh, nvme ssd than they could before thinking long term now the reason i mentioned about the price is technically getting lower is largely because of hardware shortages i mentioned in another video recent which is unfortunately on suspension right now which is super annoying but the long, long and short of it is that due to uh, production shortages and certain factories in the east that are preemptively lowering the output of their operations because of fewer staff to prevent any spread of contagion the result is that we do think we're going to see lower NAND production and lower SSD production later in the year. And although this is slotted for um, a later stage Q2 release, it's still something that I think is going to be affected in the long run. So if you are thinking of getting these, my recommendation would be to pre-order. And if not pre-order, then at least double check with your merchant. Again, span.com, shop there, data storage experts. Double check that stock will be coming eventually. They're not going to come quick, but they will come eventually. So the sooner you get on board, the easier it's going to be in the long run. Now, in terms of SSD, one thing that people want to know about is IOPS. And I'm pleased to say that these SSDs report over 460,000 um, uh, IOPS in read. And in write, of course, it's going to be a bit lower at 63,000. So again, WD using their own NAND and with that NVMe storage, the performance of read and write traditional access does seem very high, but those IOP numbers are still pretty damn good for this drive, and especially in an enterprise level environment with large scale caching, once again, as mentioned, and of course, flash station utilization. Now, in terms of the device's long term prospects, it isn't going to be like before with WD Gold, where they sort of disappeared for a little while. When they, you know, retired the WD Gold range of hard drives for a short period, it was because WD had the Ultrastar and the WD Gold series, and of course favoured more people have heard of Ultrastar in terms of enterprise and long-term storage. So they kind of retired WD Gold. The reason they brought it back, of course, is because WD Gold is not only recognisable as a brand, but also a lot of people have already got WD Gold in their systems. And I'm glad that we're seeing NVMe WD Gold SSDs coming to market. But do you agree? Let me know. It's good to see an a new NVMe entering the market and making hardware vendors change their devices because we're reaching a point now where network and internet access is far surpassing the actual connection of our storage media. And unless we really bulk up on RAID, we're not getting that throughput. And NVMe SSDs, and particularly U2, to enable the larger capacities to come to the faster speed PCIe-based SSD market is always a good thing. But if you disagree, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Check out the NAS Compare article in the description to learn more. Visit nasspan.com to learn more about data storage. And of course, purchase your devices from them. 25 years in the biz, they know what they are doing. Click subscribe to learn more. Click like if you enjoyed this. I'm sorry about the sore throat. And I'll see you next time.